So thank you so much for coming today. Um, I'm really excited to be here. My name is Kate Osborne. I work at Nginx. I'm a software engineer there on the Nginx Gateway Fabric team, which is a free and open source implementation of the Gateway API. So today I'm going to talk about extending the Gateway API, in particular one type of extension mechanism called policy attachment. I'm going to go uh, explain what it is, the two different types, and then finish with some of the challenges. OK, so to start, what is the Gateway API? Well, straight from the docs, it's the next generation of Kubernetes ingress, load balancing, and service mesh APIs. What I want to focus on today, though, is that next generation of Kubernetes ingress piece. So why do we need a new generation of ingress? What problems in the ingress API is the Gateway API trying to solve? And there are several answers to that question, but today we're talking about extensibility. So how do you extend ingress today? Well, Ingress API, like the Gateway API, is a universal specification. It boasts numerous implementations, so it has to be portable. But the Ingress API has a pretty basic feature set. It doesn't support common routing capabilities like traffic weighting, header manipulation, rewrites, redirects out of the box. So when users want those features, or they want to enable some proprietary configuration for their implementation of Ingress, what do they do? Well, they add annotations to their ingress resources, and more annotations, and more annotations. So you might ask, I hope not, but you might ask, what's wrong with annotations? Well, first of all, they're not portable, right? These implementations up on the screen here, these are Nginx ingress controller annotations. And if I wanted to switch from Nginx ingress controller to another ingress controller, let's say that even uses Nginx under the hood, all of those annotations would be different. So you'd be mapping one-to-one -one all these annotations, and both ingress controllers might not support the same thing, right? So it's definitely not portable. What else? Well, these are strings to strings. So they're unstructured. They're harder to validate. You can't apply a schema to them like you can the spec of a CRD. Um, they're also a little bit harder to use when you're dealing with more advanced features. For example, let's look at how you configure rewrites with Nginx Ingress Controller. That's pretty challenging, right? I mean, that's almost like learning a demand-specific language just to configure rewrites. And you can imagine you might mess something up, so they're harder to use. What else? Well, this is an example of an Ingress resource with some annotations on it. Um, and what I want to point out here is where the annotations are. They're all grouped at the top of the resource under the metadata field but they aren't by the relevant parts of the spec that they're modifying. And you can imagine as you add more and more annotations, as you add more and more ingress rules, that this gets harder and harder to understand. So what is the Gateway API doing about extensibility? Well, it came up with this resource model. So instead of just having an ingress class and an ingress, we now have more resources, okay? It's also role-oriented. So you can see we have the roles there on the left-hand side of the screen. We have infrastructure providers, cluster operators, and application developers. Now, each of these roles are responsible for their own resources, and all of these resources attach and relate to one another, forming a type of hierarchy that is going to be important when we get to policy attachment. So what does this role-oriented model do for extensibility? Well, it gives us more layers to extend from. Right? So instead of just having that ingress resource with annotations, maybe we can extend from the gateway class if you're a cluster uh, infrastructure provider, or from the gateway. And we'll see what that looks like in a second. So next up, it's expressive. So those advanced routing capabilities that I mentioned that ingress doesn't support out of the box, well, the gateway API does support a lot of those features. So by becoming a more feature-rich API, you need to extend it less often. It's portable. This is table stakes. It has to be portable, just like the ingress is supposed to be portable. And then finally, the Gateway API was designed with extensibility in mind. So despite the intention to make the Gateway API more expressive and feature rich, it's inevitable that given the oh, about 30 implementations that implement the Gateway API and the numerous discrete data plane technologies that power them, that all features can't be standard. Right? And then on top of that, there's always going to be proprietary configuration that these implementations want to deliver to their users. 
So the Gateway API added extension points to their API to support these inevitabilities. So let's take a look at what those are. Okay, we're gonna start at the very top with Gateway class. So you can extend the Gateway class if you're an infrastructure provider by referencing an external resource like a CRD or config map. This contains arbitrary config of the implementation the controller you're using. This configuration is applied at the top of this resource model, and so it affects all the gateways that are under that gateway class. Well, let's say you only want to apply this arbitrary configuration to a single gateway. Well, you can use this field on the gateway object if you're the cluster operator. Very similar, also called parameters ref, and reference an external CRD or config map. Okay, what about lower down? So if you're an application developer and you own your HTTP route, maybe you wanna add a route filter. So HTTP routes have routing rules on them. Um, so these route filters are referenced from an individual routing rule. They don't apply to the entire route. And they define processing steps for the request to response lifecycle. So some of these are built into the API like URL rewrite or header manipulation but you can also reference an implementation-specific filter. Um, a lot of examples I hear thrown around are authentication filters or rate-limiting filters. What else do we have? Well, this is actually something that the Ingress API supports. You don't have to route to a service type. You can route to a custom backend type. A uh, common example here is an S3 bucket. You can also just create your own type of route. So if HTTP route or a gRPC route doesn't work for you, maybe you have some special protocol that you support, you can create your own route type. So long as it implements some of the common routing fields, it'll plug right into the system. So this is really great, right? We have extensibility at every point of that hierarchy, but is it enough? Um, I'm gonna make the argument that it's not. So what else do we need? Well, let's say I'm a cluster operator. I'm in control of setting up the cluster for all the application developer teams that are using it. I want some measure of control over the entire system. I care about security. I want to mandate security policies for all the applications. I also want to make it easier for application developer teams to roll out their apps. So I want to set some sane defaults for all these applications. Or I'm an application developer and I know my application better than the cluster operator. And I want to be able to fine tune the settings that the cluster operator has defined for me. Or any of these roles. Maybe you want to change the behavior of services or namespaces without changing the spec. And how can we do that, right? And more importantly, how can we do that while maintaining consistent user experience across all implementations? Can we get more extensibility without sacrificing portability? That's where policy attachment comes in. Now, quick disclaimer here, policy attachment is currently a work in progress and some of these details may change. Okay, so let's start with some definitions. What is policy attachment? Um, and I wanna point out that a lot of this information comes from the, uh, the Gateway Enhancement Proposal on Policy Attachment and Meta Resources, which is linked in the back of my slides. Okay, so policy attachment is a specific type of meta resource that can affect specific settings across either one object that's direct policy attachment, or objects in a hierarchy that's inherited. So what's a meta resource? Well, it's a Kubernetes object that augments the behavior of another object in a standard way. And finally, what's a policy? Well, it's a meta resource, but it's also just a CRD. So two things I wanna point out here is that policies, they can be owned by the Gateway API, or they can be owned by implementations like Nginx. But policy attachment, that's a pattern, that's a set of rules that's written by the Gateway API, and it governs how the policies can affect the resources in the Gateway API hierarchy. And again, the goal here is to give the user a consistent user experience across implementations, even when the content of the policies change. Okay, so let's take a look at the first type of policy attachment, direct policies. So this is simpler than inherited supposed to be easier to use and easier to understand. Um, and let's start by taking a look at an example. So here we have uh, a diagram that shows the request flow from a client through the various gateway API resources to some backend pods. If I wanna enable TLS termination between the client and the gateway, I can do that with the gateway resource itself. But what if I want backend TLS termination? What if the pods that back that service have their own certificate how can I tell the 
gateway or kind of the route, um, how to connect with those pods. And the answer that the Gateway API has come up with is by creating a backend TLS policy and targeting that service. So what does this look like? Well, here's the YAML of it. And first thing I want to point out here is this is a Gateway API type. So the API version has the Gateway API group. It's named clearly to indicate that it's a policy, backend TLS policy. And then the, in the spec, we have the target ref. So the target ref identifies the object to apply the policy to. This policy targets the service foo. Um, but it can target more than one service, but it is tightly bound to the kind service, meaning you can only target services with this policy. And then next up, we have the validation, the backend TLS validation config that we want to apply to the services that we're targeting. So why is this direct? And before I get into the details and why it's direct, I want to highlight a key difference between policies and the other extension mechanisms I've already gone through. And the difference is which resource is doing the referencing. So with extensions like route filters, backend refs, parameters ref, um, the gateway API resource is referencing an external resource like a CRD. But with policies, the policy or the CRD is doing the referencing. It's targeting a resource in this gateway API resource model. Okay, so why is it direct? Well, first of all, it only targets this, it only affects the service it targets. So the other services that the backend TLS policy is not pointing to in this diagram will not have the configuration applied to them. What else? It's tightly bound to the kind service. You can only attach these policies to services. And then this is kind of similar to the second point, but it attaches to a single layer in the hierarchy. All right, so what about inherited? So if you recall, an inherited policy affects objects in a hierarchy. So this slide shows the ingress hierarchy. There is a sidecar hierarchy as well, but for this talk, I'm focusing on the ingress use case here. So there are two types of settings for inherited policies. We have defaults, which set defaults for something, and overrides, which set mandates, requirements, or constraints. Defaults are given precedence from the bottom up. So what does this mean? Well, it means that if you apply a default to a gateway and you apply a different default to a route, the route default will win because it's lower in the hierarchy. Overrides work the opposite way. So they're given precedence from the top down. So let's take that same example, except use overrides. So I've applied an override to the gateway and a different one to the route. The one at the gateway will win because it's higher up. This also means that the default attached to the backend will have the highest precedence among all default values, whereas the override attached to the gateway class will have the highest precedence overall, including defaults. All right, so to explain more about inherited policies, I wanna take you through Nginx Gateway Fabric's first policy that we created. And it starts with an issue where a user wants to be able to set the client max body size for their application. And for those of you who aren't familiar with Nginx, client max body size is an Nginx setting that allows you to set an upper limit for the client request body. Okay, so when we got this issue, we got together as a team and we wrote up some user stories. Here's what we came up with. Number one, as a cluster operator, I wanna be able to set same defaults for client body settings like client max body size and client body timeout that will work for most applications. And as an application developer who knows my app, I wanna be able to configure these values as well. And then finally, and this one kind of is the same thing as number two, but I think it's important to keep it separate. If I'm an application developer, I wanna fine tune the defaults that my cluster operator set for me. Okay, so we had all these user stories and we started looking through the available gateway API extension mechanisms. And we were looking at the fact that we have multiple roles up here um, we want to set same defaults, and we want to be able to fine tune those settings, and it really seemed like policy was the best choice. But which type of policy? I was reading the GEP on policy, and I read that direct, is, direct policy attachment is simpler, it's easier to understand, it's easier to use, and I just really wanted to write a direct policy. So I started going through the use cases and trying to figure out, well, where would the policy attach? So for the first use case, we're dealing with cluster operators. They own gateways, so it makes sense that it would attach to the gateway. Okay, and then what about the other two? Well, those are application developers. They own routes, 
So it makes sense that both of those would attach to the route. Now you might be looking at this diagram and be saying, Kate, this is obviously an inherited policy. We have policies attached at multiple layers of the hierarchy, right? But I still wasn't convinced. I still really wanted this to be a direct policy. And so I jumped into the Gateway API Slack channel and I, I gave them my use cases and I said, is this direct or inherited? But really I wanted to hear that it was direct. And Nick, one of the maintainers, jumped on and he said, well, let me ask you this. Does the policy affect any other object aside from the one it targets? And I, I say it depends, right? If you attach it to an HTTP route, well, it really only affects that HTTP route. If you attach it at the gateway level, I guess technically it will affect both of those HTTP routes that are attached to it, because that's where client max body size is enforced. But I still just want to use direct policies. Maybe I can write multiple direct policies. Maybe I can just tell the user, just use it as a direct policy. Uh, but then it came back and he said, if a policy can be used as an inherited policy, it must be treated as one. And in hindsight, this really makes sense, right? Like if I attach a policy to the gateway that configures client max body size to say two megs, and then I attach one to the HTTP route and set the client max body size to 10 megs. Well, which one wins? And I can come up with the answer to that and I can document it. It can be implementation specific, but that's not standard and it's certainly not portable, right? This is why we have inherited policy. Okay, so I'm finally convinced. I'm writing an inherited policy and I'm going through the spec again and I'm just looking at all the rules and we're just gonna write this policy together. So it must be a CRD, easy can do that. It may be included in the Gateway API group or defined by implementations. So we've already seen a policy that's in the Gateway API group. This one's going to be in Nginx's group, so we'll add that to the API version. Must be clearly named to indicate that it's a policy meta resource. We'll copy what backend TLS policy did. We'll call it client settings policy. We'll add some metadata. Next up, all right, so it must include a label on the CRD that specifies it's an inherited policy. Um, conversely, if it, was if it was direct, it would have to specify direct. We're going to cheat a little bit and show this on our example, even though it would be technically on the CRD itself, but that's what the label looks like. And then it needs a spec and a status. Let's go ahead and add those. Now let's dive deeper into spec. Okay, so for the spec, we need a target ref. We've seen this already. But for this particular policy, we want to support attaching to HTTP routes and gateways. So we're going to cheat a little bit again and show them both there. You may specify a default stanza, an override stanza, or both. Okay, so let's think back. Default set default values, overrides mandate something, they set a requirement, they set a constraint. Our use cases are setting same defaults and fine tuning those defaults lower down in the route level. Well, I think we can get all of those done with defaults. We don't need any overrides in this case. So let's look at what this could look like. So you have a default, and then nested under that, you have the settings that we want to expose. But we're only setting defaults here, and this uh, instruction from the gap is a may, not a must. So we can omit default in this case and just document that these values are treated like defaults. So let's do that, keep it a little bit more streamlined. Okay, so what about status? So when a user creates a client settings policy, they give us the desired state um, through the spec of that policy. And then the controller that processes the policy, in this case, Nginx Gateway Fabric, well, they're gonna write the actual state to the status. But what the Gateway API does is it prescribes what that status should look like. So one thing that it prescribes, or actually recommends in this case, is that you should use the policy ancestor status struct in the status stanza. Now this is something that's used by the backend TLS policy um, and we wanted to use it in our inherited policy as well. And let's take a look. So we have ancestors. Ancestors are resources that are associated with this policy. Ancestors contain an ancestor ref, so this is the actual ancestor. Um, and this is like what the ancestor is, is, is left up to the implementation a little bit. They recommend gateways, but in our case, we thought it would be more helpful to set the ancestor ref to the resource that the policy targets. So if the resource targets an HTTP route, the ancestor ref will be that HTTP route. And if, it's a, if it targets a gateway, the ancestor ref will be the gateway. And then what else do we need? Well, we need some conditions. 
In this case, it'll be nested under that ancestor entry. And what this says is the ancestor, let's say it's a route, the HTTP route resource name, accepts the policy that you've created. If it didn't accept the policy, you'd expect that status to be false and the message to contain some helpful information, hopefully. Okay, so that's it. I mean, we wrote our policy, here it is. So what does this look like in practice? Well, let's look at an example. We have a gateway and then three different HTTP routes attached to that gateway. Now, let's say I'm a cluster operator again and I wanna set some same defaults for all of these routes. So I create a client settings policy and I set the client max body size to two megs and the body timeout to five seconds. What this looks like is that all of those routes attached to the gateway will inherit those settings. But let's say I am now the application developer in charge of the bar HTTP route and that client max body size isn't gonna cut it for me. I need it to be bigger. So I can create my own policy and I'll target my route bar and I'll increase that max size to five megs. And because the route is lower than the gateway in the hierarchy, my value wins and I can replace it there. But you'll notice that the timeout remains the same because how we calculate this effective policy is gonna be done on a field by field basis here. Okay, so what about BAS? What if I'm the application developer for the BAS route? I don't like either of those settings. So I'm gonna create my own policy. I'm gonna target the BAS route. And again, because we're dealing with defaults and because routes are lower than gateways, both those values will win. So what's left is foo, and, and foo doesn't have any special needs, and the same defaults work for them. So they don't create any policy, and they still inherit the settings from the same default set or targeting the gateway. Okay, so that's policy attachment as simply as I can put it. What have we achieved with policy attachment? What kind of extensibility have we gained? Well, let's revisit this case for more extensibility. So with inherited policies, we can now mandate security policies across all our applications using overrides. And using defaults with inherited policies, we can also set same defaults and allow application developers lower down in that hierarchy to change them. So we have satisfied both of these use cases. Um, we can also target resources that aren't gateway API resources. We can target services like we saw with the backend TLS policy. So we've satisfied that as well. So we've added more extensibility, but how's the user experience? This brings us to the challenges. So first of all, it's complex, right? I think it's a fair statement. Um, what I've shown you today is just a fraction of what's laid out in the GEP on policy attachment. But if you still aren't convinced that policy attachment is complex, let me show you this. So let's consider how you configure client max body size with the Ingress API and an Nginx Ingress controller. It's just that. One line, right? Pretty simple. Now let's consider how you do the same thing with the Gateway API, policy attachment, and another Nginx controller. So on its face, I mean, it's certainly more text that you can agree. Um, it's also a completely different resource, right? It's a CRD. You need to know what target ref is. You need to know what happens when you target a gateway or when you target a route. You need to know what happens if you target both a gateway and a route. So you need to understand the rules, right? It's complex. There's also what's been coined the discoverability problem. And I don't have enough time to do this problem justice, so I really recommend, if you're interested, reading the parable in the GEP on policy attachment, again, linked in the back of these slides. Okay, but I'm gonna give it a shot. So let's say we're the application developer team working on the foo HTTP route. And let's further say, we don't know that client settings policies exist. We don't have permission to view them, edit them, create them, or anything. So we have no idea that any policy is affecting our route. So we don't have the complete picture. And if something goes wrong, we might make the wrong decision because we don't know everything about our system. We don't know what's affecting our route. In an ideal world, you'd be able to know that client settings policy existed, that it was affecting your route, and you'd be able to know exactly how it was affecting your route. You'd be able to know what the settings are. 
So what's the Gateway API doing about that? Well, it turns out they're doing a lot. So there's a tool called Gateway Cuddle, or Gateway CTL, however you prefer. Um, that's a command line tool for the Gateway API. And you can describe Gateway API resources. You can even see how policies are affecting that resource. I believe you can even see the effective policy, like the settings. And I don't want to steal too much thunder from Gateway Cuddle, because they do have a talk this Friday that I recommend you guys go to. I'll definitely be there. So what else? Um, well, status. So this is something that actually Gateway Cuddle uses in order to build um, their responses. But kubectl describe is your friend. Make sure that you're describing your policy resources and you're looking at the status. And if you don't see a status, it's a sign that something's wrong with the resource that you're targeting. So go describe that resource. Um, one status that I didn't mention earlier in this talk is something called policy affected. And this is meant to be a sort of breadcrumb that the controller can leave on resources that are affected by a policy. So maybe you describe your, right, your route, sorry, and it says policy affected, and then it gives you the type of policy. It's like client settings policy. So at least you know that client settings policy exists, and then it affects your route, and you can go to your cluster operator and be like, what is this, right? So status is your friend. And then finally, I mean, knowledge is power. So understanding the rules of policy attachment will make you a better policy user. Okay, so we've added extensibility, but how has that affected portability? Is this better than annotations? Have we replaced annotations with CRDs? How many CRDs is too many CRDs? And I don't think I can answer this question. I think it's up to you. I think it's up to the users, but I can give you my opinion. And I think the solution is better than annotations. It's more powerful, gives you a system of defaults and overrides, that is consistent across implementations. It allows you to change the behavior of services and namespaces without changing their specs. This combined with the efforts of the Gateway API to be expressive, to standardize as many popular routing features as possible, and to add standard policy types like backend TLS policy should make implementation specific policies less common. But when inevitably those policies are created, the rules will be standard which allows for common tooling like Gateway Cuddle, which makes policy attachment more portable. So what's next? Well, there's an open GitHub discussion around potential changes for policy attachment, also linked in the back of my slides if you wanna participate. Improved discoverability, Gateway Cuddle is just on its first release, so I expect it to bring better things. More policies, so the Gateway API has already added another standard policy called um, backend LB policy. I say standard, but it's technically experimental. Um, and other implementations are adding policies too. What else? I wanna give a shout out to Quadrant. Quadrant's been doing a lot of great work with policy attachment in the Gateway API working group, and they've actually created this open source framework for implementers to use to spin up policy controllers and more generically process policies. And then finally, you tell us. We want your feedback. We want you to use policies and let us know what you think. Is it portable? Is it powerful? Does it provide you with value? Okay, so if you want more of the Gateway API, there are tons of talks this year at KubeCon. So I'll leave that up for just a second for you to look through. And finally, the Gateway API wants your feedback. No matter where you're at in your user journey, the Gateway API wants to know about it. So please take the survey if you can. Um, and wow, I really like sped read through that, so I have a little over five minutes for questions, if anyone has any. Thank you for listening. Hi. Do you have any tool to help debug when a request and uh, what policy is affecting the request? So let me see if I heard that correctly. Do I, we have any tools to debug a request and if that request has... Been affected by any of the policies? Oh, good question. Um, I don't think nothing for a specific request, no. Um, the Gateway Cuddle tool can describe, like the custom resources, can look at everything that's stored in the API, but it can't, no, it can't look at a specific request. Even it cannot log at the Kubernetes level? 
it can't log at the what level? Kubernetes test level, like uh, as a debug log or something that this request Gateway is, cuddle itself? Yeah. Or, I, or whenever the request is arriving, it can actually log that this request is failing at this layer. The oh. the I think yeah, I think individual like gateway implementations could do something like that, right? Yeah, but I think that would be up to the individual in implementations. There's nothing prescribed by the gateway API. It says they must do that. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for the question. Oh, yep. Hi. So the the overrides give the application teams the freedom to adjust from the default inherited policies, right? So overrides. Oh, sorry. I go ahead. My next my question is. Um, with this policy design, or is Nginx or whoever's creating this stuff, are you going to be able to have configurable boundaries of what that sane threshold may be, so the application teams can adjust within the sane range, right? But not go like, not go nuts in, in certain areas. I was wondering if there's going to be any sort of like a range there of what's allowed downstream. Right? Yeah, so that's that's a really interesting question, and I believe that Quadrant has brought that up and is something that um, they might be discussing on that GitHub discussion I link in the back of the slides. This idea of constraints and mins and max, I believe that's true. Okay, so it might be coming. As of right now, no. Um, and then to answer your question about overrides, so overrides, they mandate things, they set requirements, so if you, as a cluster operator want to mandate something, or even higher up as an infrastructure provider, you can set an override at the gateway class level and no one can change that value. So as an application developer, I cannot fine tune that override. If you set it as a default though, then I as an application developer can change that. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah, exactly. And I'll point out, if you set an override low enough, so if you set an override at the route, and then someone comes in and sets an override at the gateway, the gateway will win. So it just matters where you are in that hierarchy. Yeah. Okay, anyone else? Oh, sure. Um, so if one of the problems with the Ingress API is that you force people to write annotations and then the annotations don't uh, easily migrate between Ingress controller implementations. Do you not get the same issue if you're defining the policies with an, like an Nginx CRD? Absolutely you do, yeah. So the content and the policy will change if you move from controller to a controller. But the idea is that hopefully the set of rules that govern how the policy affects the Gateway API resources, um, is enough to maintain some of that portability. So you have to learn a new policy, you have to learn a new CRD, but you should already understand how target refs work. You should understand how defaults and overrides work, right? So you just need to learn like the configuration that's contained in that policy. Great, thank you. Yeah. In that uh, first slide, you showed up, or one of the earlier slides, you showed up a whole lot of annotations. Um, what, is there a public place where Nginx is talking about the specific uh, support for some of those many, many annotations uh, coming to a policy resource? Oh, like mapping to a policy? Good question. Um, no, so we have documentation for all of those annotations just on our normal doc site, but we don't yet have feature parity with our own ingress controller, so we don't have like a one-to-one -one mapping of annotations to policy, but that's a good idea. Basically, the question, is there a plan to get to that point, uh, or is there any information that's available that we can look at on you know, GitHub or wherever else yeah. to see what the kind of progress is for something like that? Yes, absolutely. Um, so we have our own version of enhancement proposals in our repo, Nginx Gateway Fabric. There you can find our whole plan on policies moving forward and which Nginx features we want to expose through policies. Okay. Thanks very much. Yeah. Yeah, so what he was saying is that there's a project called Ingress to Gateway, which helps users migrate from Ingress to Gateway controllers. That might help you out. And check that out as well. <laughs>